Okay, today we're going to look at two particular types of electrical circuits. We're going to look at series and parallel circuits. Right, before I show any hands-on of how it actually works, we're going to do some diagramming of how these circuits are laid out. And to make it easy, we're going to start off with a simple circuit. Allow me to zoom in here for you a little bit. Now we always start off with a power source. And in this case it will be a battery. So we'll draw two long lines and two short lines like this. This represents your power source. And since the battery will give it a voltage of one and a half volts, that's your typical voltage of your dry cell double-A battery and then when you're drawing your wires they're always drawn in straight lines and they're always angled at 90 degrees and for our device on our circuit we'll make it simple and we'll just use a light bulb and the little squiggly line inside is what tells you that it's a light bulb then we'll draw our other wires and we'll come down and back to our battery. So now what we've got here is a simple circuit and our electrons are all flowing around in this circuit. So what we have here is a closed circuit. There are no open points in it, and the electrons are able to go around in a complete loop. And with that, our bulb lights up. Now, say we wanted to be able to turn this light bulb on and off. Because right now, this closed circuit is always on. There's no way for this bulb to be turned off until this battery is completely out of power in this circuit setup. So let's add a switch to our circuit. So we'll draw another one. Start with our battery again. We'll come up and then when we draw a switch we put a dot there and we put a dot a little bit above it with a line connected like that and that's how we represent our switch. Then we come up and we'll draw our bulb here come back down and connect. So now we have a circuit in which we have a switch in there so now we can break the flow of electrons when we want to to turn this light bulb on and off. So right now we have an open circuit so the loop is not closed. So the electrons will flow but then well they stop right here because they've got nowhere else to go. I mean they can't jump over there and then continue going. Now it's got to be making contact. So if we want them to continue on, well we flip the switch over that way. And then our electrons can continue around and now we've made the circuit closed. As I said before, this circuit is open when the switch is open. So now the switch is closed, now you got a closed circuit and our light bulb ball nicely lights up again. Now say we've got something like a resistor in the circuit. We'll come over here. And a resistor of course is anything that creates resistance in a circuit. And you can t t tell that by if it's a light bulb it'll be dim. If it's a resistance going to another item such as a motor it should run slower. And a resistor can be a number of things. It can be a heating element like in your toaster oven or in your electric heater or it can be an electrical motor. When an electrical motor is running it creates resistance. And uh, to show a resistor we just make a little squiggly line like that. And we'll draw our switch again here. We'll come back down, we'll draw our light bulb, and then over. So now we've got voltage, we've got resistance. And of course our light bulb 
Should I mention it? That's our load. This is what's using power. So voltage, resistance, load. So our electrons travel through, but then they meet the resistor, and so they create resistance so the electrons can't flow as fast through the circuit. And of course, then again, we're open, so we'll make it closed. Now we have our closed circuit again, but we've got resistance in the circuit, so this light bulb will light. However, it will be not as luminant, or it will not be as bright as over here because it's got resistance in the circuit. So, before I run out of time here, let's show the series and parallel circuits and we'll get those out of the way here. And series and parallel circuits, you're dealing with more than one item that's using a load. So in this case, we'll start with series circuit. Get our power source, we'll come up. We'll go here and we'll draw. You can see this. We have one light bulb, then another light bulb, and then another light bulb. Then we'll come back down and connect. Now this is a series circuit. You've got your power source, and it's running through these three bulbs, and they're all running across the same wire. So these bulbs will all be lit dimly because what's happening is our one and a half volt battery here is having its div voltage divided by the number of loads. So with three of here, each one of these bulbs is only getting half a volt. This is how you get these dim light bulbs. And the other catch is if this light bulb goes bad, so do those two, because when this breaks, it creates an open circuit so these light bulbs can, can no longer light. So that's one of the two things with a series circuit is you've got reduced voltage by the number of devices and if one device fails they all fail. It's what we call a single point of failure. Now let's show the parallel circuits. We'll start again with our battery up and then with a parallel circuit it splits so we got our three bulbs again and we connect there so now what's happening is is we got our power source but then it splits to a point and then each bulb has its own connection so instead of going from one to the other they all have their own individual little circuit. So with this setup, these bulbs can glow much brighter than if they were in the series circuit over here. And since this is one and a half volts in this setup, each one of these lights is getting that one and a half volts. So they stay bright. And also, if one of these bulbs goes out, say the left one there, these two continue to light because the circuit is only open on this wire over here. It's not open over here, so the circuit is still closed. So these bulbs will continue to light while this one is out. And that about covers a series of parallel circuits. In part two of this, we're going to have a hands-on look at how a series and parallel circuits work and plus show a simple circuit to begin with.